Hopefully you guys can hear me. I know it's a, uh, we're, we're working on something. Let me flip it around for you guys. This is what we're doing. This is what we're doing over Mo event. So uh, what we're doing here is we're test riding some bikes. Um, I have the Indian Challenger out here. We have two FTRs, I believe, maybe three, I don't know. What's up, Vapid? What's up, Anna Marie? How you doing? Mar Anna Maria, sorry. Um, and we got the Scout Bobber 20. So super excited. What's up, Rack? Dude, Rack, dude, I freaking absolutely love the new Challenger. Let's, let's get a view of the Indian Challenger before they take off. So here we go. We're going to go this way. What's up, Faridin? How you doing? So this is this is Trina and Steve from Ride on MTC. We're doing the demo event, so we're making everything safe. But this is the Challenger right here. Look at that Challenger, dude. Uh, I just rode it, and the video will go up uh, real soon. But oh my gosh, this thing is badass you guys remember when i was giggling for the ftr when i was doing the demo for or not demo but test ride for the ftr and i was giggling and i was like man i'm so happy i got this bike i did the same thing with this bike i was giggling while riding this bike let me know if you guys can hear me i'm gonna try to keep it nice and quiet it's gonna be pretty loud when the when the engines are moving but we got the ftr 1200 race replica right here what's up vapid what's up lady tau yeah, FTR 1200 with the Acropovic exhaust, and it's badass. And then if you guys want to like see what it looks like without um, without the uh, uh, license plate right there, uh, we got it right here. We got this. So if you guys are ever wondering what this is all about, it's so badass. So the top box. Um, for the challenger they're not out yet so the touring pack's gonna come out pretty soon i think what's up josh how you doing so this is the challenger right here it's just the saddlebags uh there's no top box like uh let's see there's trina uh top box i think the only one that really has it is the uh there's the roadmaster so this is the the roadmaster Roadmaster Dark Horse in red. But I'll be riding this one today. So you're going to see uh, just kind of like a ride review of it based on uh, what I do. Oh, babe, here. You want this one? That's the Scout Bobber 20. I rode that yesterday. Really nice. Uh, there's the Scout Bobber. Uh, how does it compare to HD? I haven't ridden a uh, road glide, so let's go ahead and switch this around. There you go. So I haven't I haven't ridden a road glide yet, um, so I wouldn't know how to compare it with the Challenger. Yeah, you guys don't want to see my face. You guys don't want to see my face. I haven't compared it to a, a Challenger yet because I haven't ridden the road glide. Um, but I'm gonna tell you right now. Uh, whenever I was riding my Harley to these demo events. Uh, yeah, there's a chief. There's a chieftain. So that's the blue chieftain. There's a chief vintage inside and then there's a Springfield Dark Horse right there. Rode both of those. You'll see the video on that. All great bikes and I'm going to give you guys an explanation uh, when the videos come out of how they are. But I, like I said, I don't have an experience with that and I was just kind of talking from a perspective of how would I ride? Is this okay for me? I'm 5'6", 30 inch inseam, um, you know, because I, I, uh, I want a touring bike at some point, you know, because I want to go tour. And I was giggling on the FTR when I got it, and I was giggling on the Challenger. So more than likely, I'll be getting a Challenger in, within five years. That's my guess. If I ever want to do cross-country touring type stuff, I think that'd be really fun. I think if I ever do like a cross-country tour, I'll obviously do it in the the van or the truck. But then if I get the Challenger, man, I'll be riding around everywhere on that Challenger. So yeah, that's those are those bikes. But we got a bunch here. So we got now that they're all out of the way. So it's Springfield Dark Horse. Yeah, they're like cars on two wheels. Seriously, it felt like a car on two wheels. I absolutely enjoyed uh, riding that bike. But yeah, this is what we were doing at the Indian Motorcycle Tucson. So if you guys are local, 
um, we're here all day. So I mean, if you're in Phoenix and you want to come down, um, I'll be here till at least at minimum 2 p.m. So I've been here since 7 a.m. Um, if you want to show up and hang out, there's going to be uh, there's going to be food. There's going to be food over there, so we're going to uh, provide you guys lunch. Plenty of parking for those motorcycles and all that stuff. Um, but if you're going to drive, we have parking over here, and then there's parking anywhere. You just kind of make your way. But, yeah, this is badass. So, guys, come on down. Come hang out. I brought some stickers, so if you come over and say hi to me and you know who I is, I'll go ahead and give you guys a sticker. Got some stickers. There's Matt. There's my, there's my boy, Matt. There's my boy, Matt. Oh yeah, don't don't get don't get into Harley. Don't get a Harley. Seriously, like the uh, um, the more I look at it and the more more I look at all these things, you can get amazing deals on Indians, better technology, and cheaper. So we got there's some good deals going on right now. If you guys want an FTR, I don't think you're ever gonna find a better deal than this. Look at this right here. Look at this. Look at that, boys. You want an FTR? Now's the time to do it. They still wanted 2800 down. Oh my gosh. But yeah, guys, get yourself an FTR. Look at that. Come on down. Get it. So if you guys want to sign up, the main thing is like for the demo event, let's go to the rules. Let's go to the rules and regulations. And then you've got your cruise Yeah, the Vulcan, dude, the Vi Vulcan 900, you can't go wrong with that. I would just keep that. So here's the rules. This is a Indian motorcycle Tucson. So, I mean, if you have, uh, you know, your, your valid motorcycle endorsement, you know, 18 years or older, um, basically all these things. And you, when you come here, you, you look at this real quick and then you come on in and then you sign up. So sign up, um, you just need your license and then they provide a helmet if you don't have a helmet. So you come over here and you, you sign up and then you get like a wristband. You get like a little wristband so that shows that you are signed up. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff here, guys. Dude, the Chief and Dark Horse is badass. Where is it at? Where is it at? You saw it? Yeah. So that's a Roadmaster. Look at that thing. That's a Roadmaster uh, Dark Horse. And here's another one. Look at that. That's so cool. Love it. Love the color. And then look at this thing. Yep, there's the Chieftain Dark Horse, but in red. Chieftain Dark Horse in red. Dude, Russ, I was a I was a Harley guy, and I switched to Indian. You will not regret it. So I rode um, the Chieftain Limited, not this one, obviously, but in the demo event. I liked it. I do have concerns with some of the stuff. Um, I'll be riding that today, and then I rode all the other bikes. So it was a lot of fun. One sec, I saw the comment. What are the technical advantages over HD? Don't know much about Indian. So honestly, I don't know too much about the technical stuff, but moving from, I'd have to get a salesman for that, but moving from uh, Harley to Indian, I noticed, uh, you know, the traction control, ABS comes standard in a lot of stuff. Uh, you got the infotainment system on a lot of these bikes. You have not only ABS for straight line braking, on some of these bigger bikes, you have ABS for cornering. So if you're in the middle of a corner and you have to apply the brakes, ABS will activate. So typically with normal ABS, it won't activate in a corner. It's just going to activate when you're going straight. So that's really important to have, especially when corners are going to be like some of the most dangerous places uh, for turning, especially. Hey, how you doing, man? How you doing? Hey, you want to be on? <laughs> I'll come see you, man. I'll come see you soon. You here all day? Hell yeah. Hey, look at that. So he's going to get a sticker. But um, so you're going to have like some of that advanced technology, traction control for cornering, traction control for straight. Um, hey, how you doing? Uh, Indian's reliable from 1 to 10. Uh, really, uh, reliability, I have not had an issue with my Indian. I've only had my Indian since... Uh, shoot i think july 
So, I mean, I haven't had it very long. I know HD had a lot of problems for me. And I, the cool thing about Harley, I'm not going to shit on Harley. The cool thing about Harley Sportster is I was able to work on it relatively easy because there's just a lot of support online. So that's one thing that you want to look into. There's not a lot of support for FTRs right now because it's really new. So, and you're also not going to find a lot of support for Challengers because they're really new. So you're going to have to kind of figure it out yourself, wait for the service manual, figure out how to do a lot of these things. So if you're already technically savvy, uh, you should be fine uh, just with a service manual. So for the reliability uh, on my FTR, so far zero problems. And then if I did have a problem, the customer support here at Indian Motorcycle Tucson has been amazing. I've gotten all my services done here. Um, I'm getting my tires changed pretty soon. Um, and they work, they bend over backwards for me. So I've never had that with a dealer. So I think that's really cool. Indians are amazing bikes. And I think the only thing that you're ever going to have issues with Indians is just because they have all that extra technology. You might have bugs, you might have firmware updates, you might have all these different things. But that's not the biggest problem. I mean, cars, same thing. You know, cars have massive electronical systems and they seem to do pretty well. And Indian's doing really well. Look at that. Native American. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, this is the, the whole history behind it. I don't know. It's up to them. They, I don't think they're ever gonna change it. I don't think they're gonna change it. I mean, if the Redskins won't change their thing, and that's even worse, you know what I mean? But PC culture, I don't wanna get in too much on that. <laughs> yeah, get some tires, man. You don't wanna be hydroplaning, especially on that, uh, well, shoot, on any of the tires. The front tire, you don't wanna hydroplane the front tire because you, you'll dump the bike, basically, like if you grabbed a fistful of front brake, and then you don't want the rear tire to lose traction because then, just like you said, you'll be slipping and sliding, boys. But hey, here's my bike. This is my baby. This is my baby right here. DDFM, boys. Oh, yeah, definitely spooky. But the simple fact that you probably kept it up, you have some experience. You said you had dirt bike experience, right? So you will be able to, to handle a lot of that. Yeah, lossy. That, that could be a big thing with uh, newer bikes and newer cars, the whole debugging of things. But the cool thing is it's all... It's all electrical, so or like all uh, computer programmed and coded, so it's easy to fix when they come up with a fix. If it's like a serious mechanical issue, like the frame is all screwed up and like it was designed poorly, that's when you really start running into some problems. Yeah, my FTR is badass. No problem, Rat Kitty. Yeah, my FTR is amazing. So uh, there's another FTR, Scott here, uh, the tech. He bought the first FTR, there it is. He bought the first, I'll go over there. He bought the first FTR out of Indian Motorcycle Tucson and I got the second. Um, he got the race replica. So his the first bike or the first FTR that came out of this place was a race replica. Mine was second. I put some stuff on it, but let's go take a look at his bike. He got, these are the tires I'll be getting on my bike uh, coming up. Um, some Dunlops. Go ahead and get some good, uh, good tires for the bike for, for more so long distance, you know like real uh, practical tires here's his bike the race replica things badass things badass so these were the original um these are the original pegs i replaced these pegs so this is what they look like typically and they to me it felt a little too slippery so i decided to to get the uh, pro taper rally pegs uh, the barbecue, I could ask. Let me ask. I'll go walk around and I'll ask. I think uh, probably 10 o'clock, maybe 11 o'clock. I know they were cooking when I showed up at uh, noon. They were already done with a bunch of hamburgers. So I got the Rally Pro Taper. Bronze paint. Um, for which bike, Matthew? Because I saw some bronze. Um, maybe this is what you're talking about, but I know there's a darker bronze. So there's... Is this what you, this is like a, that's like a, that's like a brown. Uh, time it is, let's see, it's 918. So are you talking about this color right here? Is that the color of the bronze that you're talking about? Because if it is, they have it, dude. They have it. Yeah, yeah. That's a badass bike. So what's the over under on how long until Dan gets a new bike? He said five years. My money's on two years or less. <laughs> it was different. Okay, let's see if we can find. 
Well, they have the green, so there's green here. There's green. Let me... I think... Uh, well, I mean, I got stuffed. You know, I, I'm, I'm probably going to get a truck um, instead of a van. That way it's a little bit easier to do some stuff. Um, but that's coming up soon. And then I'll still do the little tour thing. So, I mean, I got... I got bills, you know. I got I got other things that I would want to do other other than a bike. Um, mainly focusing on motorcycle training concepts. That's going to be the the new thing a thing. Do the green is amazing. So let's see what I can do. Let's go ahead and put this. Is it zoomed in? No. All right, I got to take my jacket off. I'm starting to sweat. So let me put this down. There we go. Let's go ahead and do this. Let me go ahead. Put free candy on the side yeah okay yeah okay so there we go sorry i had to take the take my jacket off but yeah there's a lot of cool stuff here guys definitely come by definitely come by should i get um the race shirt should i get the race shirt you guys mind if i test something with you guys Here's the thing. Here's what I want to do. Here's here's like a video series that I want to do. I want to go to dealerships, and then while I'm at the dealership, I want to go ahead and talk about you know the gear that's here. So I want to look at a helmet and tell you what I look for in a helmet. I want to tell you what I look for in a jacket, what I look for in pants, boots, all those things, and pretty much go over every single brand that I possibly can. Uh, so you guys want to uh, work with me here and help me out, beta test this, and, and figure out what I could do? Let me know. That'd be great. <laughs> So let me get my, eh. I'll just leave that there. So let me know what you guys think. I do. I love it. What's it like to live with? Uh, that thing? Yeah. Uh, you're a little bit high up, so it, that's going to be, you have tall legs. Right, that's what I want. That's, okay. a, that's a requirement. So, so me, I'm, I'm like doing this at stoplight, so you'll be fine. Yep. Um, a lot of power, a lot of speed. So you could probably stay in standard mode. They have different modes, rain mode, standard mode, sport mode. Sport mode I absolutely love. Yeah. Um, it has wheelie mitigation, has traction control for corners and all that all that fun spec stuff. I don't really care too much about that. What I care about is that am I having fun on it and I'm having a lot of fun on it. Um, good at cornering. You're not gonna hit your pegs, you're not gonna hit your feet. Um, uh, safety wise, I mean obviously all the safety stuff. The, the infotainment system, so you have that little dash, it's yep. digital. Changes from night to day, so that's really helpful. Um, but you get two two speedos basically. You have something that uh, uh, gives you a lot of information, and one that gives you a lot of RPMs. So that's really cool. Um, ergonomics. It's a naked standard bike. It's not a cruiser. It's not a cruiser at all. So if you ride like one of these, you're gonna it's gonna be a completely different feel. So I've, I've been riding the Beale Ulysses for ten years. Oh, then you're gonna love this. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna love it. I went from a Sportster and I did a lot to it. I changed it up, made it how I liked it, and I sat on a, a, a scout, and then I sat on that, and I just kept giggling, kept smiling. Yeah. It was a lot of fun, so you're gonna have a lot of fun on that if you're used to that. Yeah. Almost too much power for the city, yeah. but it doesn't really matter, does it? No. No. <laughs> cool, man. Now, um, are you gonna demo ride today? Yeah. Oh, do they have the race replica? So that's exactly like mine, just different paint scheme. Yep. So, do they have that deal? Did you see the deal going on? Yeah. Um, it's not going to be for the S, so you'll you'll lose out on uh, sport. Yeah, sport mode, rain mode, all that. So you'll just be in standard mode, which is honestly that's all you need. Um, I just put in sport mode because so I can. I can. Um, but what they have here is is. I'm not trying to sell anything, but this is a good deal. So see how it's. Yep. Wow. Uh, that's yeah. not a, that's not a demo or anything. Yeah. No, they're selling it. So this is the the regular model. Yep. Um, but I mean, shoot, you can get a good deal compared. To, I mean. Yeah. So. Wow. I, don't know, I have a lot of fun. Um, I make a lot of videos on it, and you could just hear me, super happy. So. Yeah. Cool. I'm gonna get back to this. Thank you so uh, for talking to me. That's great. All right, so what is you? Sorry, guys. What do you guys want? Let's see. I was trying to sell my bike. Just kidding. Um, so let me know. You guys want me to go over some of this gear? Like I, this is something that I'm, I'm going to test out when it comes to the gear. Like so, let's go ahead. I can talk about 
my heart or uh, like what type of helmet I would look for, why these aren't, you know, super safe, but they've obviously fit a niche, you know, what I would be using for this bike right here or what, uh, what I'd be using this helmet for, you know, would I take this on the interstate? Would I do this? I mean, it's definitely designed for, you know, off-road. Um, so, and then I go over here and then I go over jackets. So we have jackets here. It's like, well, is this good in the, in the winter time? It's like, it's a mesh jacket. So this is what I'm looking for. It has armor and the, and the elbows. It has uh, armor in the shoulders, all these different things. And I'd love to make a video series on like helping you guys out pick stuff. Yeah, cause like I look, like as a consumer, like that's that's why I make my videos. Like some some things as a consumer, it's like I'm not gonna get that. There's no reason for me to get that just because everyone else says I should get that. You know what I mean? What's up, Tony? I buy bike gear meant for touring as it's the last. See, see, that's a that's a consumer um, uh, uh, thing. It's like I want my gear to last. I want my money to be worth, you know, years and years and years and years. So, um, and then there's some people out there, oh, the bikes, and there's some people out there that, that only want gear that might not last very long, but look really badass. You know what I mean? So let's look at the bikes. Let's take a look. They just came back, just came back. So we got the FTR. I'm going to, FTR is still on. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. I don't want the battery to, to die. So. There we go. So here, let's, what bike do you want to see real quick? Hey DK, how you doing man? You did, you saw me? All right, so we got, let's go ahead. Let's get to the front. So we got the, uh, the new Challenger right there. We have the Chieftain. We have the Scout Bobber behind that. We have another Chieftain. We have another Challenger right here. And then we got the Springfield Dark Horse. And then this bike right here, this is uh, Trina's from Riders on MTC. She's got a Chieftain too. So we got, I didn't ride this one. I rode, I rode the blue one. The blue one's the Chieftain Limited. And then we have the Chief, or not Chieftain Limited, uh, the Challenger Limited and then we have um, the Challenger Dark Horse. So they come, they come with the same stuff, uh, just different colors, and I honestly prefer all black on that bike, man. I prefer all black. So I, if I had to get a bike, I'd probably get, I'd probably get that one, the, the uh, Challenger Dark Horse. Look at that. Yeah, it's slowly, slowly getting warmer there, nice. But I'm gonna tell you right now, I absolutely loved my FTR. And then when I rode that, I absolutely love that too. Yeah, so they do. So look. So, sorry, one second. So you can actually insert a, the seat. The seat will come up. There's an insert for that. Right now, there's no there's no seat uh, backrest for it, but like there's an insert for it. So it's not on right now. It's this is the demo thing. But yeah, there's an insert for it. Um, the top case, they don't have one out yet, but more than likely they'll be coming out with that soon. I mean, the FTR came with like barely anything and there's like so much stuff coming out for it because they know that it's selling well. You got a little, eh, <laughs> he's got his, he's got his camera there. So we're going to watch them take off. Oh yeah, Leo, dude, I got some helmet buffeting also. Um, it wasn't the funnest like it did it, to me. It's like I'm gonna get a chieftain based on the fact that you know I can ride long distance, but if I get that buffeting I don't even want to ride, you know the interstate in town You know what I mean, you know just from one exit to the other, but when I rode uh, the uh, uh, Challenger that windshield it's it's powered just like the chieftain But it went a lot higher and it almost felt like I could sit lower So I felt the wind go over my head. I felt zero buffeting at the very top. It was amazing so, I mean, try out the Chief, or not Chief, and try out the uh, Challenger. Try out the Challenger. Uh, yeah, yeah, boy. We got a DDFM crew member right here. Ha <laughs> ha. But yeah, they're going to get ready to go. Um, it's almost like the point where with the windshield, it's like I'd rather not have a windshield because of the buffeting, you know what I mean? Oh, did I say loved? I meant to say I absolutely adore and love my FTR. I still do, always will. It's my baby. I still miss my my Harley, but I traded up. Know what I'm saying? 
I've been in a divorce before. I divorced my sportster. <laughs> I traded it up. Oh, Lady Tao. Oh, man. Um, so the, the only one I had a problem with, with the arm reach, and you can kind of see it. The only So you see how the spring field is kind of pulled back a little bit? The spring field is pulled back. But then you look over at the, the bobber. It's going to probably be kind of hard for you guys to see because it might be pixelated because it's live stream. The bobber 20 has mini apes, and that was harder for me to reach compared to the, the Springfield. Um, I think the best one for my size and the one I felt the most comfortable on, the one that I felt like I enjoyed the most was, was the Challenger. I absolutely loved the Challenger. I felt super secure. The reach on it wasn't bad at all. Like I didn't have to make adjustments. I didn't have to make adjustments at all for the Challenger. Um, like I didn't feel like I need to, and I could reach the the primary controls. You know, that's the throttle, the clutch, the brake, the shifter. I was able to reach those easy on the Challenger. Um, I think on the Chieftain I had reach a little bit, and it was a little bit awkward ergonomically for me. And the Springfield was was fine. Springfield was like a bigger Scout with more power, more more uh, comfort. That's pretty much what Springfield feels to me. I, it's like the Dyna of uh, of Indian. You know what I mean? Um, absolutely beautiful bike smooth ride uh the challenger is just amazing so if you ever come to one of these demo things what you do is you find the guy he's gonna uh after you you do all your work after you do all the the signing in making sure everything's right um you go to him and he's gonna put your name on a list and you pretty much just wait in uh, queue or wait in line for uh the thing uh, so long ride would be comfy right out of the factory. DK Morgan, the Challenger, yes. Right out of the factory, comfy. The seat was the most comfortable seat I've sat on in a very long time. Yeah. Serious. It sucked in my ass. <laughs> that sounded so bad. It sucked in my butt <laughs> into the seat. Oh, my God, that sounded bad. Live stream. It's awesome. Um, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, and I felt comfortable. I seriously felt like I was, I was sitting in a car but you know typically when you sit in a car you're you're pretty much riding in a car you're driving it but you're riding in it you're disconnected i felt comfortable like i was in a car but i felt like i was still in control and i felt like i was still you know doing stuff find a guy for the ting that's right that's right that yeah, indian special man I, I i grew to love them i really grew to love them i was a little hesitant i think with like a lot of other uh, I'm going to keep saying consumers, but a lot of our consumers, a little bit hesitant. You know, Harley was the big name, and then if you wanted, like, a, a big bike, you know, there's Gold Wing options and a bunch of other stuff and Honda Shadows. and But, man, I really, I absolutely love this place. I absolutely love everything here. It's so badass. But, yeah, there's all this stuff. Uh, the price range on the Challenger, let's go ahead. There's... Um, I honestly don't know too much about that. It's brand new. I just wanted to come out here to ride, and I didn't realize how much I'd love it. Honestly, I really didn't think how much I'd love it. So let's go ahead and find... They have a pamphlet here. They have a pamphlet at the at the front. So let's go ahead and find that. Let's go ahead. All right, so we got... We got this, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. Sorry, I'm going to set you guys up. Alright, so, so we have the three different Chieftains, okay? So this, or I'm sorry, Challengers. So we have the regular Challenger, so this is what it has. And then the, the Dark Horse and the Limited pretty much come with the same stuff, just different paint scheme. So you're going to get all that. Um, price, is there a price on here? So there's three models. There's no price. I could always ask. You know, I'm at the dealership. Let me ask. Seriously, the stock Challenger is insane. It's, it's amazing. And then if you make any upgrades to it, good luck. That is isn't. It's be even crazier. Let me see what Matt's doing. If he's busy, I can just ask him a quick question. One second. How much is the channel? 
21.9. So the base model is 21.9. So 21,900 for the base model. And then obviously, you know, you go a little bit more, you get a little bit more. But man, the dark horse is amazing. Um, you pretty much just get like a lot of the creature comforts with the, the higher models. But I mean, all you need really is the base model. The base model is already going to be better than a, than a lot of other bikes that have a little bit of kit. So $21,900 for the Challenger. It's honestly not that bad when I, when I think about how much I spent on the FTR. <laughs> so yeah, that's not bad. Dude, compare that to the Road Glide. Dead serious. Compare, uh, what, can somebody look up the Road Glide uh, base price for me? I'm, I'm obviously on my phone doing this stuff. Dude, Harley, uh, I mean, they, they're coming out with their own stuff, you know. I, I, the way I look at it is uh, Indian and Indian and Harley are coming out with their own things. And I think they're trying to hit a new market. I mean, you saw the Bronx. It's a 975 Bronx, but then it's it's part of the 1250 uh, motor, the new motor that they have that's coming out in the Pan America. And then imagine the Street Fighter. So the Street Fighter is going to be the 1250 version of basically the Bronx. So they're coming out with sport bikes. I mean, that's, that's insane. But, man. That's just, I, I think they're both doing their own thing. I think they went towards, like, I think Harley has a base already, so they already have the Road Glide. Um, they already have all that. And then uh, Indian is just, they're, they're doing it smart. They're only producing, like, one new vehicle, you know, one new bike um, ever so often to, based on customer feedback. And everybody wanted the FTR, right? Everybody wanted the FTR. And so now they built an FTR. And everyone's like, I want a fixed fairing um, crew, uh, touring bike. 27,489. So 21,699 for the base. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's the same price, but you're gonna get, it's like roughly the same price, and you're gonna get like so much more with the Challenger. So much more. And so what I was saying is that uh, people were saying, I want a fixed fairing, and they came out with the fixed fairing. And then Harley, like people are like, I want a fixed fairing Harley. It's like, it's already been there. And they're like, I want, um something from harley it's like it's already there so people are saying well what about an adventure bike well i want a street bike or they're i think they're going off a of different feedback you know they're going off a of different feedback but yeah so you can come here uh they have helmets for you just in case there's there's water and soda right there oh wrong way there's water and soda like that um the, the hideous fenders, yeah, I could, I could see that. The big old fenders, I, I get that. So like, so here's, they have, they do have a Harley here. So you can see it's just like a simple fender, simple fender, and then you go for like an Indian. I understand it's a different type of bike, but then you got an Indian fender. So it's, it, it definitely is bigger, but you're kind of, that's the styling, man. That's the styling. Um, you can always change it too. You can always change that fender. They do have like these massive fenders, like, like these ones the vintage but that's the thing is you're buying a vintage for a reason and you get a vintage fender so that's what you want to do with that so we got a lot of people here a lot of people here yeah you buy an indian for the indian you know what i mean and the cool thing is that with the ftr they went a little uh uh, uh consumer friendly when it comes to some of the styling and it looks like a badass sport bike but at the same time it looks like or a naked bike but it still looks like an indian you know what i mean so this place is packed. This place is packed. And we're gonna, it might be cooking food pretty soon, but I absolutely love this. I'll be here till a um, little after two. So if you guys wanna come by, there's my bike. There's my baby. There's my baby. Love it. Do you have, do you have fun on it? Did you ride the FTR? Yeah, yeah, or the Challenger. The Challenger, how'd you like it? The Challenger is awesome. Uh, the FTR, I'm not used to the that kind of uh, foot pedal yeah. uh, thing. Yeah. The Challenger, though. Yeah, it's awesome. Good, good. I loved it too. Yeah. Absolutely loved it. Apparently being live streamed right now. You are. You are. There you are. <laughs> Bye. Hi. <laughs> It's the beauty of live stream. We'll try to keep the noise down. No, you're good. That's why I got this mic right here. That, that's pretty funny. Toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe stage fours. Yeah, and the thing is with the the Challenger, it's got a new engine. I think it's that Power Plus motor. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Am I thinking of Harley? Am I thinking? Go ahead and confuse me. 
I'm getting confused now. I think, no, 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 wait, I don't know. I'll have to look it up more. Honestly, I didn't look it up before I came here because I wanted just a ride. But yeah, there's, there's some really cool stuff. It's a Chieftain, Chieftain Dark Horse, Chieftain Classic, Chieftain Limited. You got a lot of stuff, a lot of cool things. A lot of cool things. Milwaukee 8, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I think the new, um, oh, the Revolution. I'm thinking of the Revolution engine that's coming out with the Bronx and um, the Pan America. That's what I'm thinking about. Well, Thunderstroke, um, that's what these bikes, I, I, I could swear somebody can look it up. Somebody look it up for me, the Challenger engine. Because I, I could swear that there's, uh, like, I, I want to say Power Plus. I want to say Power Plus engine. Does anyone there think you're walking around talking to yourself like a crazy person? So, Dave, I've been here so many times that they understand who I is. Uh, Matt uh, is my best bud, my, my bro, and he runs this place, and I'm friends with uh, Chris, the owner. And then uh, all the salesmen know who I am. But all the people that are, are normal, they don't know. So yeah, Power Plus. Yeah, Power Plus. I know it comes with a new engine. It's a brand new engine. I'm, and that's one thing, I'll, and I'll talk about, I'll, or at least I'll annotate it in the, the ride review that I did, is that finding the friction zone was, um, yeah, dude, it's awesome. 100, almost 100 people. Uh, the friction zone was a little different. It was a little different. Scott uh, understands a little bit more. He's the, the tech here. Basically, it's how the clutch plates are uh, pulled apart and pushed together. It's different on this new engine. So it took me a little bit, but it'll be a learning curve for those that are switching from a different bike to the Challenger. It really will be. But it's something that you could easily do. Oh, we got a Polaris slingshot coming in. Those things are fun looking. I mean, I, I would rent one. I don't think I'd buy one, but I'd rent one easily. There's not a lot of room here to park, uh, especially since we have people wanting to come uh, through. Yeah. Uh, from the Philippines, damn, that's crazy. Thank you so much for for being a part of this. What time is it over there? What time? What time, man? But yeah, this is amazing. This is amazing turnout. Um, it was packed yesterday. Yesterday, I wanted to ride the Challenger, but it was booked all day, all day long. So I came here first thing in the morning to ride it. That video was filmed. It's 1 a.m. Go to sleep, man. Go to sleep. Um, I filmed it, and I think the only bike that I haven't ridden here at this demo event is going to be the Roadmaster, and I'll ride, I'll ride the Roadmaster uh, a little bit later when everybody else is doing their thing thing. Pinoy viewer, hey, man. How you doing? Today's your day off. Nice. It's always a good day to have a day off. Today's set. Oh, wait, we're going to get food. There's food. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go inside. I'm gonna go inside and I'm gonna uh, talk a little bit about some of the gear. You guys want me to go over some of the gear, like kind of like what I look for as as a consumer. It's basically with a consumer with safety in mind. Um, that's pretty much what I'm gonna do, and then then I'll go over price. Um, I try to be frugal as much as I can, so I try to find the cheapest thing with the most, you know, basically the most efficient thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Look, it's family event, definitely a family event. Um, but yeah, let's go inside. Let's look at some of the gear. Rat kitty, yeah, yeah. At work, oh, that sucks. That sucks. Technically, I'm at work too. <laughs> Technically. All right. So, we. I'm gonna find a spot to put this down and do this. You know, what? there's a. Let's go over here. Let's go over here. Sorry. Let's go over here. So if you uh, get like a three-quarter helmet or or a half helmet, um, definitely want to get some eye pro. But one sec, what's this? What's this? I think I saw something. I think I saw something. I think I, I saw that patch. I saw that patch. Let me get that patch on there. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> it's going good. It's going real good. Good seeing you again, dude. Are you gonna, which bike are you gonna ride? I'm gonna do the uh, Scout 20, Scout Bobber 20. Okay. So the one with the high bars and the pan seat. Okay, you did the, the regular Scout Bobber yesterday, right? Yeah, yesterday I did the regular Bobber and okay. FTR. So. Now you need a big bike too. You need to do the Springfield, <laughs> yeah. you need to do the Chieftain. Might as well. Yeah, I, I'm gonna do the Bobber. I gotta run, do some errands and stuff. But maybe I'll come back a little later and try Heck to yeah. do Springfield. So. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta stay and then I gotta help. So uh -huh. I'll be here. You're working. All right. cool. <laughs> I'll see you around, man. Yep. I just saw that through the window. I was like, I gotta, I gotta, gotta get it on video. 
I got a D different crew member right there. Oh, there we go. You're welcome. All right. So here we go. Let's go over here because they have helmets over here and stuff. All right. All right. So let's see. One sec. Let me let me switch the camera around. All right. I gotta fix this up. Oh, you guys want to see the scout? Let's take a look at the scout. I'll look at the helmets, but look at the scout right there. So that's the scout bobber, and then you got the, the classic over here. So there's the scout classic, or that's the, uh, uh, um, I think the 100th anniversary. Yeah, the 100th anniversary. <coughs> One second, what, what was that comment? Let's see. I have the bobber and stock seats suck. Yeah, dude, that's one thing I recommended um, when I when I te when I demoed the uh, the bobber. I was like, the stock seat. I feel like I'm gonna fall off. So they do have saddleman seats for the for the uh, the bobber. Let me go and switch this around. One second. It's like my my tripod doesn't want to function all right let's see let's see the FTR yeah the FTR is over there so which helmet do you guys want me to go over which helmet do you guys want me to go over which one of these these are scorpion helmets um, we'll figure it out which one you guys want but basically what I look for is like which one is cool looking first you know I check which one's cool looking so this one White helmets are, they stand out really well. So, first thing I look for, um, and here's the, gonna be the hard part, is uh, how to, I gotta figure out a way to do it, so. All right, so here's the white helmet. Uh, this is actually a three, yeah, exactly. It's a three quarter helmet with a chin bar. Let's go ahead and put this back. Let's figure out a better way to do this. One second, we're figuring out ways. All right, so there we go. We'll just do this. So this is the Scorpion helmet. This is the Covert Gloss White. So this is actually, as you can see right here, you can remove this bar. So this has no structural stability in it. Um, so it's not a full face. It's actually a three-quarter it's a three-quarter helmet. So, yeah, it looks cool. It looks like a full face, but it's not a full face. Um, so when I see that, I'm like, okay, well, for me personally, it's it's, it's out of the question because I want a full face. I, I need a full face um, for my own peace of mind. Um, and then when you look at the back, it's only DOT. So it's only DOT. The FMV SS number 18, that is DOT. That's not ECE or anything like that. It's not... Uh, smell is DOT. So the Scorpion Exo Convert is um, DOT. So for me, that puts it out of the question. That's something that I'm not going to get. And then there's no reason for me to continue looking further on that. So that to me is what I would do. Um, and also it's $200, $209. You're pretty much paying just for the styling. So if we go over, if we go over here, let's just say, okay, so this is a fly helmet. This looks like a decent helmet. Um, is it in my price range? Yeah, so this is a uh, retails for $139.95. Okay, it's $139. Okay, so I look at this helmet and immediately I see that it's Snell rated. At least that's what it says on the sticker. I'll double check it. Snell rated, DOT rated, and then I'm looking for the pin lock system. So uh, this doesn't have a pin lock system. So there's a good chance that it could fall up uh, later on. It does have some decent venting, so that's good. 
And then for me personally, when I ride, I like to have um, my GoPro. So this looks like an easy spot for a mount. So when we look at this, I always double check the back and it is snell rated. So if it's snell rated, more than likely it's ECE rated. Um, you definitely want to check on the inside. Now that I'm looking at it, so it's got a removable chin curtain. Um, doesn't have the fast release uh, pat cheek pads for emergency personnel. Um, but this is uh, decent for the price, $139 for a snell rated helmet. So if you are looking for a helmet, there's one right there. And then it says tinted shield included. So you actually get two shields. That usually uh, typically shields, depending on the manufacturer, it could be anywhere from like 30 bucks to $100. So add that to your cost if you're going to get another shield. So the simple fact that this is included, that's really good. The only thing that you're not going to get, like I said, is the pin lock. So I saw one of those questions about pin lock. What that basically is, is a, uh, a double paned window for your shield. So when it gets cold out and you start, you know, fogging things up in your typical helmet, it'll prevent the, the visible sport, uh, portion from fogging. But it does say anti-fog, but I mean, that might be a coating that could wear off. So you want to be careful with that. So if you look at this, the Scorpion XO Convert, that's what it looks like with the face thing on. And then this is what it looks like structurally let's go ahead and go down a little bit so that's what it looks like structurally so that's how much structure protection you're going to get not a lot um these will definitely be compatible yeah a lot of comm systems are compatible you'll find something with compatible uh carbon full face will definitely be lighter way lighter um the thing is the a lot of good helmets are already light so now you're just kind of going crazy with how light you want to go um, you're paying a little bit extra, and if that's something you want to do, then do it. Definitely do it. So we're going to look real quick at uh, a typical typical jacket. Okay, so this this is a, a typical jacket that you'll see anywhere. This is a Scorpion XO uh, jacket, and it's the Drifter 2, I believe. Yeah, this is a Drifter 2. So it's the Drifter 2. But so when I look for a jacket, what am I what am I doing it for? I'm, am I going to ride um, uh, when it's hot? or am I gonna ride when it's cold? You know, so you wanna have two different types of jackets typically. What I do is I, in Arizona, it barely gets cold, and when it does, it does get cold, but then there's ways to layer up. So for me personally, I'd get a mesh jacket, exactly that dog, uh, zip in layers, uh, ride with layers. So I'll, I'll get like a mesh jacket and I'll layer up. So for me, uh, I can turn a mesh jacket like this in Tucson to a four season jacket. So now that I have that situated, I kind of figured that out. Uh, what is this, is this jacket going to work for me? So what I do is I'll typically wear it. I'm not going to wear it right now, but I'll see if it fits me. Um, sometimes there's an aggressive jacket. So you're going to have jackets that fit really well when you're in full tuck. And there's going to be jackets that are going to fit really well when you are sitting upright. So it's all based on the stitching. You know, it's kind of like slim fit jeans versus relaxed jeans versus boot cut jeans. Um, all those different things. You want to find the jacket that works for you because there's going to be plenty of different types. So now that I figured it out, so let's say I wore it. Let's say I wore it and um, it fits good. Now what? So now I look at where the abrasion resistant stuff is. So on this jacket, all that, all the white, I don't know if you guys can see it, but all the white is perforated. So that's not going to hold up in a crash. All the black is uh, abrasion resistant material. So there's a lot of abrasion resistant material, which everyone's like, oh, that's, that's cool. You know, abrasion, you want all abrasion resistant? Well, it's gonna get hot. So they, there is compromise when it comes to getting a mesh jacket. So the mesh portion won't hold up into a crash, but since um, there's a lot of abrasion resistance, that will do fine. And where is the abrasion resistance? It's on the outside. It's exactly what you want. It's on the outside of the arms. Um, it should have, yeah, it has elbow armor. So it has armor and shoulder armor. But then when I look at this, let's take a quick, quick look. Right, right on the elbow is the mesh. I don't like that. So right on the elbow is the mesh. That mesh will rip. This mesh will rip right on the elbow because that's where you have the impact, right? So this jacket to me is not going to be good. Um, it's not something I'm going to want to get for me personally. It might be the price is right for a bunch of people, but right here, the mesh is on the elbow. That means it's going to rip and then who knows what's going to happen to your armor insert when you're in the crash so right away i don't like that 
Um, I like it on the inside because on the inside of the arm, that's not typically where you uh, have abrasions. And on the inside is when you have your arms up on the handlebars, you're going to be able to get that airflow. So that's really good. The chest and the stomach and everything, that's perfectly fine. Um, you have the exhaust vent, that's perfectly fine. Oops, causing problems here. So I didn't, I don't like it on, on the uh, the outside. So that's not going to be something that I'm going to want to get. But let's look at some of the other uh, features that are actually good. So let's go ahead and set this down real quick. There we go. So yeah, tight fitting armor. Um, one second, let me move the mic. Sorry, it's going to be a little bit loud for you guys. One second, sorry. Moving the mic. Technical difficulties real quick. There we go. Sorry about that. Yeah, uh, leather, you're, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do the best when it comes to abrasion resistance. Um, you're going to have to do a little bit more care with that. Uh, so that's going to be the big thing. But here's the thing with leather versus airman fibers. Leather, the heat transfer. So you can have, like, let's say a friction burn, and you can kind of feel the heat through... Let me, let me take that back. So if you stand on hot asphalt with shoes, some shoes can uh, absorb and dissipate the heat really well. Some shoes won't. They'll melt or they'll just, you'll trans, you'll feel the heat in your feet. Uh, leather themselves, uh, the heat transfer is really good. So it's not going to transfer a lot of the heat. So when you go into a crash and you start having road rash or you start to set across the ground, you're going to build up heat. Um, it's going to prevent that heat from transmitting into your body a lot better than it is uh, a jacket like this so that's really good so at the at the top level uh leather is going to be the best the perforated leather for, for summer riding all that stuff but a lot of people don't like that there's a reason why sport or uh, uh, professional riders don't, don't ride with gear like this they ride with a full one suit there's no full one suit like this with with aramid fibers and like this it's it's leather for a reason so that's why it's very important uh to have leather but not everybody can do that not everybody can do that uh, what do I look for in pants? What's a good price range? Uh, pretty much whatever the best deal you can get. Um, I look for features first, and then um, if a feature is not something to me that is justified by the price, then I won't get it. Um, but yeah, so let's, let's go back to this real quick. So it does have the shoulder inserts and then elbow inserts for armor. It does have it does have it in there, and that's all it has. Uh, you're gonna find uh, the armor or the padding in the back. But here's the thing, that is PE level foam. That's not CE rated. So you're gonna have to get an upgrade to the back armor. So whenever you can upgrade it, uh, the back armor for that. When it comes to the pants, I look at the same thing. I look for where the uh, uh, construction of the abrasion resistant material is. Typically, you're gonna have it in the trunk. So like in the butt area and then on the sides of the thighs. And then uh, if you have the, and then the rest will be like a very heavy denim. So that's really good. Um, it's going to be breathable. It's going to be work. You can walk around in it, but then you get the protection because most of the, sorry, I'm like moving around. Sorry. Most of the stuff that you're going to get when it, in a crash for the pants is going to be in the buttocks area, the knees, and then possibly the sides of the leg. Uh, you're typically not going to get it. You know, you're not going to get abrasions on your shins. You're going to get the impacts on the shins. You're going to get impacts on the knees and the hips. Um, along with some of the uh, road rash. So with with the pant armor, there's no pants here, so that's why I'm not showing anything. Uh, yeah, so the back inserts, uh, there's armor. If you're uh, touched a motorcycle jacket, you feel that, that foam in the back. That's a, it's a, the back protection. That's the impact protection for your back. But most manufacturers just put in a simple foam. It's not impact resistant foam, it's just like a comfort foam. So you want to replace that with CE rated back protector uh, protection. Um, so with the pants, uh, there's some manufacturers that make the whole pant out of Kevlar, but that can get hot. So that's, that could be a problem. That can get really hot. Nikki's pants are full Kevlar, but they're, they're not hot. So uh, you just have to find the right manufacturer. She has the Bullet uh, Fury 2 uh, leggings. And those are really good. Uh, typically, though, you're going to find just uh, abrasion resistance aramid fibers in the butts and then the upper thighs, maybe. You're not going to find it everywhere else um, unless you really, really, really look for it. And Bullet is one of the ones, uh, Bull and then IT. 
is one of the ones that uh, do a good job with that. Um, you want to have, I mean, at minimum, they're going to have knee inserts for armor, for pants. Um, sometimes you're not even going to find uh, hip arm inserts or pockets. Um, let's go ahead and switch it over to my face. The shape of the gas tank. Yeah, the gas tank's pretty cool. Um, one second. Okay, cool. Hopefully you guys can still hear me. So, um, when it comes to the uh, good pair of boots, but not the motocross kind, um, you're, you're going to have a tough time because you're typically going to find uh, uh, cruiser style boots or you're going to find um, sport like sporty bikes, uh, sport bike boots, which are going to be a lot like mine, where are going to be like almost a full thing. So uh, Speed and Strength comes out or came out with a, a like a Converse style boot. So you can check that out. Um, but it has some protection. It has D30 inserts in the ankle. Uh, it's, a, it's got a mid uh, shank. Um, I'm sorry, midsole shank so that it doesn't bend when you put your foot on the peg. And it has a bunch of other stuff. So that's why it's always important to have motorcycle specific gear because it's designed for the motorcycle. But back to the pants thing is uh, the hip armor, you want to look for uh, inserts for that if you definitely want to have that protection. Definitely do that. Um, but yeah, there's not much you can do with, with pants. Now, one thing that I do realize with pants is that you're gonna to wanna to get something with possibly with some type of elastin in it. So that's gonna be that uh, stretchy material you find in like yoga pants. Um, some companies are starting to do that so that when you sit on the bike, it's not gonna be tight on you, but still offer the protection. And I think strength, uh, Street and Steel has some pants like that. And then Reax has some pants like that. Reax is the, uh, um, the cycle gear and Revzilla brand. So you wanna check into that. But I plan on doing um, some more like this. Let's go ahead and go there. So I plan on, uh, going to do, you know, it's not live stream, but I'd like to go over different helmets and what I look for in it. And, you know, the $209 for, for that one up there, way too expensive for what you're getting. And then you go over here and then you go and get like a fly helmet. It's a full face helmet, Snell rated, comes with two shields. Um, it doesn't have a pin lock system, but you know what? Neither does that one. It says it's anti-fog. Um, it, it's going to offer the protection, and it's $140 compared to the 209. So if I choose between these two helmets right here, I would pick this full face and then maybe find it in white. You know what I mean? I'd rather do that. I save money. I have the most protection. And honestly, it's probably going to be more comfortable than that one because this one... Um, if it, like a bug hits or anything hits, it could possibly break that chin guard, but this one will hold up. So you're going to have that. And then also I plan on doing, oh, one sec, plan on doing gloves. So Get Lord's going to send me some gloves. We're, we're working on a set of gloves and we're a glove thing. But like what I look for in gloves, like, like this right here, it's like, yeah, you can, it's $12.67. 12 but there's zero protection whatsoever. It's got mesh, so you're gonna your hands won't sweat and it'll be comfortable. But what happens if you're in a crash? Like this right here, it's double stitched, so that's good. But I mean, it's not gonna hold up compared to something like like this. So now this is what we'll do. This one, this is kind of more comparable. So this one's fifty nine dollars. This one's six sixty bucks. But you're gonna have knuckle armor. So this is a hard knuckle armor. Um, and remember, this is just Indian brand stuff. And then you're going to have double stitching, but you're going to have reinforcement in the palm and everything. So you're going to have good leather and that's a situation. So you get more protection with that. But I want to go over some different brands, different places, kind of what I'm looking for. Like, what would I buy, basically? What am I going to buy? Like, if I had the money and I was in the market for something, what would I buy? And then why would I buy it? That is my biggest thing. So that's what I would do um, and I plan on doing. And that's going to be a video series. Uh, it's going to be a test. So let me know what you guys think about that because I really want to make sure that I'm I'm making content that you guys need and sometimes want. Main thing is need. So let me know what you guys think. 
So what do you think of the higher end helmet, like a Shoei RF 1200 offers more protection than the helmets you're talking about, or does it just a higher price tag? So DK Morgan, um, that's a great question. I really wish I could write it down, but I don't have my, I mean, I'm using my phone. So uh, Shoei, I have a Shoei RF 1200, and based on what that fly helmet is, it's $139. Shoei RF 1200 is what, 400 plus? To, it's it's above 400. So why is it above 400 when that helmet is snell rated and the Shoei RF 1200 is snell rated? Isn't that the same thing? Yeah, it is the same thing. It did pass the same test. Um, it, it, there is no test score though. I mean, is a D passing? Yes, a D's passing. I'm not saying Fly has a D rated helmet that passed snell barely, um, but uh, I know there's a reason why professional race. Uh, riders and I know it's not just marketing but there's there's got to be a reason you know with the marketing you have a lot of R&D a lot of uh, input from racers so Shoei is probably gonna be like an A rated Snell helmet does that make sense now it's not just the price though so uh, Shoei they make their uh, shells fit really well with their with uh, the helmet so typically when you have a cheaper helmet that is that is highly rated but it's cheap it's inexpensive uh, I don't want to keep saying cheap it's more like inexpensive um, what's going to happen is they're, they're going to have like five different shell sizes. So for a small head, you're going to get like a massive shell, but a lot of padding. And that's something I recognized with uh, the Bell. Uh, I forgot which one I got. The SRT. Yeah, the Bell SRT helmet is that the, the shell was huge, but I had a lot of padding to fill in the void. With my helmet, the shell is snug and there's a little bit of padding, but it's high quality padding and I feel like I don't have this big old bobblehead. So that's, that's kind of, you pay for some of that. You pay for different venting, you pay for different research into it. Um, and then at the end of the day, you know, you just kind of have to figure out what it is that you want. Do you, do you care about having a bobblehead? Do you care about having all that? And if not, then get a cheaper helmet that has the best safety rating or in, more inexpensive helmet with the best safety rating. If you want something that is gonna fit your head well and uh, lighter, better vent pr profile um, on top of the safety rating, then get something like a Shoei, an Arai, you know, uh, an AGV, something like that. But that's all based on consumers, you know, that's that's what I want to go over on this video series. So if that's something you guys want me to go over, I'll definitely go over and it'd be kind of cool to get like, uh, like Shoei to invite me over and I could talk helmets with them, you know what I mean? I think that'd be really cool. 1200 grams, nice. Nice. Yes, yeah, so there's some really, uh, Rurock has some like light helmets. You might want to check them out. Uh, supposedly they're ECE rated. So ECE and Snell, I think for me personally, I think they're about the same. They're roughly the same. <sighs> yeah, I'm super excited. Oh yeah, there's a victory. Yeah, there's a victory. There's a victory here. There's a way to save. Uh, so in the way of safety, do you think there's a large compromise in wearing a module? I love the ability. Um, there is a compromise. When the, when the thing is up, when the modular helmet is up, you have a three quarter helmet, okay? So when it's down, if it's a reputable uh, three quarter helmet, like uh, I can't, exp I don't, as long as it's EC or E rated, cause Snell doesn't uh, test modular helmets. So you're not gonna find a Snell rated modular helmet. But if it's ECE rated, then it should be good, okay? So uh, the compromise is definitely when it's flipped up, you're not gonna have the protection. When it's flipped down, you have the protection of a full face helmet. So when you ride, make sure you have it in full face mode. When you stop and you're doing stuff and you don't wanna take your helmet off, that's where the three quarter helmet modular thing really comes into play. Um, but yeah, you definitely wanna uh, mitigate the risk by keeping it in full face as much as possible. I honestly, personally, I want to get a, a modular helmet for when I teach classes. So when I do the demo portion of the class, when I'm showing the class, this is how you do the, the exercise, I want to put it in full face mode. But when I'm talking to the class, I want to flip it up into three quarter mode so people can hear me. So that to me is my use case. I'm not going to go Turing. I'm not going to do anything crazy where I need that. But for me personally, I want to get one for that reason. But it's not a good enough reason for me to buy a helmet. Does that make sense? Um, so Sonics, yeah, so there's some modular helmets that have a plastic clip 
that will clip when you when you fold it down it's a clip that will that is plastic that will clip it together there's other helmets that are modular that are in the higher brand like Schuberth, i believe that's how you say it um, they have a metal clip so you're going to have metal on metal holding it together um, definitely the weak point though you know the weak point is the clip of the helmet in a full face helmet it's all together so you're not going to have the biggest of problems when it comes to that um, but you're gonna I mean, it's a compromise it's a compromise but if it's ece rated you should be doing fine you really should be doing fine all right guys so one hour live stream it's time for me to get something to eat and then i think i'm gonna be helping yeah i'm gonna be helping people stuff for their bikes at 10 o'clock so i'm gonna be showing them um yeah there's three we there's three the uh, can ams over here um but i'll be showing them you know how to get on the bike how to start it all that stuff so i'm gonna be getting out of here because uh, so, i'm gonna be helping out now i'm gonna be helping out from 10 to 2. so if you guys want to come by uh come hang out all right so thank you guys for stopping by really appreciate it i'll be seeing you guys next time all right